morning. My presentation is about the yield option pricing. It focuses on the valuation of uh, investment decision, specifically to stage expansion options using a wavelet based method. So the aim is to evaluate two stage expansion options, which means to evaluate an investment decision to expand a project for price K1 at time T1, and then again for price K2 at time T2. And these expansion options fall under the category of real options. Uh, the traditional discounted cash flow approach can only be applied when the project's cash flow is known. Uh, here we consider a more general situation where the project's cash flow depends on the underlying commodity price. And in this case, one can use binomial lattices, Monte Carlo method, or PD approach. Uh, here we focus on the last one, the PD approach. Due to advantages it which it offers, which is capturing spatial dependencies. Then, under the assumption that the underlying commodity price follows a geometric Brownian motion, the model is representing by equations uh, of the Black Scholes type. However, the situation is more complicated than for financial options because not only what one but five equations need to be solved of course there's no closed form solution the payoff function is not given and also setting boundary conditions is more complicated for these reasons real option has not been extensively studied in the literature like uh, financial options for example and therefore, the aim is to develop a suitable model and a numerical method for the model that is efficient in the sense that it is a higher order conversion with respect to both spatial and time variables and allows an efficient solution of the resulting system, which means with only a few iterations. Since wavelet-based methods are known to have these properties, we use the Galerkin method with cubic spline wavelets for spatial discretization in combination with Crank Nicholson scheme with the Richardson extrapolation. Uh, then the method is applied to numerical experiments concerning an option in iron or mining industry. And additionally, the aim is also to determine the most suitable wavelet basis for the method, and to this end, numerical experiments are performed for seven different cubic spline wavelet bases, and the results are compared. So the model assumes that the commodity price follows a geometric Brownian motion. Here T represents time, W is the Wiener process, sigma is the volatility, R is the risk-free interest rate, and delta is the mean convenience yield on holding one unit of output. And in fact, the model includes three projects. The first project, P1, P0, doesn't involve any option to expand. The second project contains an option to increase production by a factor of kappa 1, at time T1 at the cost K1. And the last one comprises both the previous option and option to further increase production by a factor of kappa 2 at time T2 at the cost of K2. Uh, DK represents the after tax cash flow rate and DK star is the lifetime of the project. And it has been established in the mathematical literature that then the value of the option of the project is represented by this differential equation. However, here the differential operator is degenerate, which is a complication. And therefore, we transform the equation to logarithmic prices and localize it. And then after these adjustments, the differential operator is no longer degenerate. 
the generate, which greatly facilitates the problem. For example, we can use the standard stable app spaces and not the weighted stable app spaces. The equation must, of course, be equipped with appropriate terminal and boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are determined using the net present value of the projects at boundary points. And the terminal condition at time tk star is zero because the value of the project is zero when the lifetime of the project tk star is reached. So now we consider an option to increase production, but only at time t2. This option is represented by the similar equation as the previous one and accompanied by appropriate terminal and boundary conditions, which depends on the previously computed functions. And now finally, the value of option to increase production both at time t1 and 2 is determined by this last equation. So in summary, there are a total of five equations that need to be solved successively. As already mentioned, we want to develop a wavelet method, therefore we need a wavelet basis, which is a set psi on the interval 0, 1, which satisfies these four properties. It is a raised basis, the basis functions are local, the basis has hierarchical structure and consists on some function on the process level called scaling functions and functions on various levels called wavelets. And the last assumption is that wavelets have vanishing moments. And since we want a higher order convergent method, we use cubic spline wavelets, specifically orthogonal wavelets, which are cubic spline wavelets, which are orthogonal with respect to the L2 in a product. Then we use three types of these spline wavelets derived from the splines and three types of cubic Hermite multi-wavelets. Here you can see the example of wavelets. These are orthogonal cubic spline wavelets that we constructed in our other paper. And all the wavelets in the basis are constructed from these six fundamental wavelets. As previously stated, the model is described by five equations. Fortunately, all of these equations are of the same type. And therefore, we can use the same method to solve these equations. I briefly describe the method. First, we transform the equation to interval 0, 1 and homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions by the standard approach. Then the variational formulation is derived and the Galerkin method is used with S levels of wavelets for spatial discretization. To obtain a fully discrete algorithm, we employ current Nicholson scheme for time discretization, which leads to system of linear equations. And since the matrix is non-symmetrical, we use Gemra's method for its solution. Uh, we also use diagonal preconditioning because it's known that using wavelets together with diagonal preconditioning leads to optimally conditioned matrices. And the last step of the algorithm is the Richardson extrapolation, which enables us to compute the solution with fewer time steps than just the current Nicholson scheme. So numerical experiments were conducted for expansion options in iron ore mining industry to verify the efficiency of the method. The data are taken from the literature. Here, GTK is the after tax cash flow rate. The reserve of the resource is 10 billion stones, and the product rate for the first project 
is to choose no. And the aim is to evaluate an option to expand production by a factor of two after two years for five ten billion dollars, and then again by a factor of two after four years for a price twenty billion dollars. And here you can see the results. The first graph represents the value of the option in the first stage of the project. On the time interval 0, 1, 0, 2, which means option to increase production both after four and two years. And the second graph represents the value of the option in the second stage of the project. On time interval 2, 4, which means option to only increase production at time 4. Uh, this table presents the results for orthogonal wavelets and three types of spline wavelets. N is the number of basis functions. M is the number of time steps. V25 is the value of the option uh, 4 times 0 and price 25 and iter is number of outer and inner generous iterations. And studying the convergence of values V25, with respect to NMM, we can say that the method is high or the convergent. With respect to both spatial and time variables, the rate of convergence was between two, three and four for all the bases. And we can also state that uh, the numbers of iterations are uniformly bounded and that these numbers are small. Here are the results for pubic harmite multivalets. And here the conclusion is the same. The method was also higher order convergence and numbers of iterations were uniformly bounded. However, regarding numbers of iterations, uh, the orthogonal wavelets seems to be superior to other wavelets because they require just one outer iteration. So now I summarize the results. The model was in low prices and the differential operator was not degenerate, which greatly facilitates the problem. The proposed method uses the Galerkin method with cubic spline wavelets and the Crank Nicholson scheme with Richardson extrapolations. Numerical experiments conducted for two stage expansion options in the iron ore mining industry confirm the relevance of the method and its advantages, which are the higher or the convergence rate with respect to both spatial and time variables and the small numbers of iterations needed to solve the resulting system. All the wavelet bases examined lead to sufficiently accurate approximate solutions with relatively few iterations, but the orthogonal wavelets were superior regarding the numbers of iterations. And our future research aims to develop an efficient wavelet-based method for more complex models, such as models with stochastic volatility and multi-asset models. Thank you for your attention.